Hey, Geezer, how you doing? Hi, John. Could you possibly have a Swiss Montreal supplier give us quote for movement case and whatnot, but would have to wait after the pandemic. Uh, they supply to watchmakers in Montreal via Switzerland. Okay. Hey, uh, that's a... <laughs> Find out what this thing's got. Hi, Mazine 44. Okay. Um, okay, let's see what's going on. I see a caregiver of old folks uh, that I know caught COVID-19. She had to be isolated for the rest of her family, included a, a baby boy. Oh, wow, man. Yeah, I, I know a guy who... Um, who came down with it. I think he's going to be okay. Though. He didn't get it too bad. Hi, Mark. Um, Stefan. Junior. Hi, Junior. Well, you made it on time today, Junior. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, good. Hey, thanks, Mark. I, I never know what the uh, sound of the video is like until you guys tell me. Hi, James. How are you? It's evening in London. Here it might as well be evening. We've had rainy cloudy day all day today um in fact we even had thunder and lightning earlier today which is so we know spring is here and uh, the poor guys out in the midwest in the south have been getting tornadoes so who hey blake how's it going uh what watch oh i mark i got on my see i was trying to show that to people this morning and it was really hard because of the light See if I can do a better job here. It's really hard to do it without taking it off. There, that's sort of it. Let me, I, I got to take it off. That's the only way to really see it. Hi, Kaz. How are you? Uh, let's see if I can do this right. Da da. Boom. Uh, there we go. Sort of. You know, really, the most interesting part about this watch and, um, is the double hairspring and and what the double hairspring does it keeps it centered because it's sort of like you know if you have one prop on a plane you it pulls you off to one side but if you have two you can have them going in opposite directions so they so the torque uh, cancels each other out hey mark uh, let's see headed to pick up uh, treasure bottles from my neighborhood bottle shop a treasure bottle, huh? Okay. Um, all right, guys. Well, listen, um, some of you are here this morning and, and know what we're up to. Uh, uh, let me give you some updates because some people had some ideas uh, that they um, that they brought up. Um, so anyhow, let, let's, let me sort of rewind what we're doing. Uh, the idea was was that uh, hi Mar Matija, I hope. I the idea was okay. Well, what would it take to start a watch company that had an affordable but high quality watch? Okay, and so uh, what we started with was uh, one thing, and then we changed our mind. Well, I didn't change. It. We yeah, I guess it sort of came up. Uh, we were going to start with the most affordable uh, watch that Vosher had. Vosher being a quality uh, movement maker that you could actually buy watches, I mean, buy watch movements from. And roughly as sort of a, the, the minimum number of watches you can buy from them, uh, watch movements, is 25. And they have a really neat deal with that. And they'll even put your uh, your company name on the logo. Uh, so, uh, so it's, uh, you know, just sort of to, to try to understand something about the watches that we're buying. Hey, Tim. Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, so let's, let me tell you where we are. For those of you who are here, you'll know this. But then I added some everything else is new. Okay, first of all, we wanted to get a really good case. Uh, and the there's this, I, I don't know what they cost. <laughs> they, um, they haven't told me. But uh, it's by Wooten Lannan Catton. 
Caton, Caton. It's in Switzerland, and it's it, the I think the the uh, Caton has been making cases, or the Caton family has been making cases for a long time. So you can get some good quality ones. Well, with Voot and Lannan uh, involved in it, uh, it gives it a certain something else to it. Uh, I'm sure he would only have the highest quality, and of course he can have his own um, uh, cases made any way he wants to. Uh, this one was a nice one. I got the idea from uh, Ophion because this is where I got the whole idea from it. And they have these teardrop lugs for it. So I thought that would be a you know a nice one as opposed to uh, one of the ones that, you know, uh, here's a typical case from, um, uh, from I don't know, it was, uh, I, I got it in uh, one of the Chinese shops. But, you know, it's a very functional one. It has a... Um, it has an exhibition window on the back, and that's a nice thing too. So, uh, so this would be the case. So, uh, imagine now, you're someone's thinking of buying a watch, and I say, okay, it's got a Vuitton Lana and and, and Caton uh, case to it. Now, to tell you the truth, I'd rather have one by them than by so most watchmakers. I mean, as Jaja Lacoutre came up to me and he said, well. Uh, we have one of our cases that we knock out at the factory, but uh, if you want, we can give you a Caton and uh, uh, a Vooten uh, Lonnen and Caton case. I take the I take the latter, all right. So we can you know you can start off with a good case. Hey, Flip and Zippo, how you doing? Um, is the back of the case transparent or solid? Good question, Johnny. It's transparent. Okay, now the other thing that we talked about was uh, going in. Uh, what I did, I found the the least expensive movement of Vosure. Now Vosure's movements, the least expensive ones. In fact, maybe all of them are automatics. Uh, so uh, the someone said, well. They really like a second hand on there. I forgot who. I mean, a lot of people said they really wanted a second hand, if nothing else, uh, for you know to tell the watch is running, and so they say wanted a, a center of seconds. Then the problem with center uh, seconds is that it tends to make the uh, the movement higher because you have to have a pinion high enough to handle the hour hand at the bottom and then the minute hand, and then on top of that, the second hand. But it turned out that they're the same thickness. They were 3.9 millimeters, which I thought, well, heck, you know, that's great. And so this is this is sort of the new, um, uh, the new Vosher movement that, that I found. And uh, this is the back, and you can see the... Um, the balance wheel there and then this is the front and when we looked at the other one that we had we didn't see the perlage that they have and on the and on the on, on the back side you can see the uh geneva now uh, the geneva wave now i don't know the exact price of this you know when you're buying 25 but i'm going with sort of a roundhouse figure of a thousand dollars okay and nor do i know uh what a case like this would cost um, I'll guess $200, okay? So we have $1,200 into the watch already. Now, the next thing we get is Bruce here. Uh, Bruce needs to be here. Anyway, well, Bruce uh, came up the, with the idea of the, hey, crappy, uh, we'll call it the Beret Watch Company, and I didn't like that idea, but they ganged up on me. Uh and so I thought, well, that's nowhere near as pretentious enough. And so I had it translated into French, and it's Montre's uh, <laughs> beret. Now this is a a dial from. It's called VS Dial Company, and it just so happens that they're not far from where I live quite by chance. And the VS Dial Company has has makes 
enamel dials. And so I thought, wow, that'd be pretty cool. Now, this is simply one of the dials uh, from their company, and I just uh, put this on it. And the hands they have are, are all um, sword hands. And they're just that, whoop, sticking out like that. And, you know, they're fine, but somebody suggested uh, Breguet hands, and I think Breguet hands would look much better. Now, as far as the fonts and so forth, this has sort of got a Art Deco Bauhaus combination font, and the, that's okay. But uh, we could have anyone that we uh, that we wanted to. So, I mean, that's it. Oh well, uh, one more thing. Uh, we'd have to uh, get a, um, <laughs> a geezer. Uh -uh. Now, by the way, too. Geezer is going to be, he's going to be our face man. We're going to put one of those, get one of those wire things with the uh, loop on it, put it up there and have Geezer looking down like he's a watchmaker, even though we don't have a real watchmaker, okay? Geezer volunteered to do that, and I, I thank him for it. <laughs> Has Geezer got the that promotional? <laughs> Geezer, get on that. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. Now, uh, that was another thing. Uh, Mark, I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> hey, crappy, that's a good name. Uh, but it, it, this wasn't my idea. Uh, I, I, I would have it's just it's pretentious, but not pretentious enough, but it'll do. Okay, so we'll call it uh, Montres Beret. That means the Beret watches. All right. All right, and we'll be on enamel. Now, now, if we stop and think about this, okay, I, I don't know what the enamel uh, dials are going to cost, uh, pop. If we had a bunch of them made, let's say, I don't know, what, 20 40 we'll say $50, $50 a piece, okay? So there's 25000 for the uh, 25 movements from Vosure, and then it's another, let's see, I think we said about $200. Uh, it could be more for the uh, cases. I, I don't know what it is, but we'll say 200 for sake of argument. So that would be another, let's see, uh, about mm, another $4,000, somewhere in that neighborhood, four or five. We'll say 5000 Okay, so you got um, $25,000, $30,000 for the case and the movements. Uh, and this is for uh, 25 uh, watches. And then I don't know, a hundred bucks per uh, dial. That would be another. That's not very much. Uh, what two hundred and fifty more bucks? Uh, <laughs> the um, okay. Now the band. Uh, we if they were all going to be sold in the U.S. or all in Europe or all in one country, it, having a nice gator strap wouldn't be a problem. But as soon as you, you ship it overseas or out of a country, uh, sites gets a hold of it. Now, there's nothing wrong with sites except their procedures. Uh, there are a lot of easier things they could do, but what happens unless you fill out a dictionary worth of uh, paperwork, you can't get it through sites. So uh, the idea would be to have a, let me see if I, I got one here. What I'm looking for is one of those um, easy uh, release uh, uh, bands. You just have a little put and you pop it right off. That would be a cool thing too. Uh, if you get, uh, if you have, um, an FP Jorn, they all come that way. And the nice thing about those little ones that you, that you, um, <laughs> this has got to have the hardest bands to put on and off. Took me quite a while to change bands on this. It came with a blue one and I got a black one for it. So we don't want a bands like this. And they're easy to find. I mean, a, a quick release, I think they're called quick release bands. And it just, they just have a little thing on it. You pull it and then pull it right off. But the good thing about it is that the end of the spring bars are rounded, and that's really good. So you could even you could even have a steel 
uh, steal one into a gold watch without messing it up. Okay, uh, yeah, Basir, our movements are all automatics, unfortunately, I think. Well, the, the newer ones, the more expensive ones are three hertz. Uh, but the ones that uh, at sort of at the bottom of the, um, not the bottom of the barrel, but in terms of the least expensive. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, leather would be fine. Yeah. What there? There are a number of different options with leather. Um, I think I don't know. This is probably a Gator band, and. I don't know if this is gator or or what it is, um, but it could be leather with a with a gator print on it. Hang on a second. I think I. There we go. Remember this watch right here that we worked on. This one has a leather strap and it's simply a gator print on it and so you know you could do that now the, the thing of it is is that i think you getting a good high quality band though uh would be worth it um otherwise we end up in a just i mean a shipping and every other problem okay all right uh the case would be stainless steel yes john yeah, maybe a stainless steel one. What what the idea is is sort of like, is it possible to have a a really good watch with that's affordable? <laughs> that's all it is, and, and I think there's Atelier Mazine or something like that. The one that uh, uh, what's his name has. Um, anyway, yeah, there, they, you know there are companies that do that. Uh, but I was just sort of trying to say is, um, now, Mark, listen, Mark, please pay attention. Nothing fancy. This is a simple watch, okay? No retrogrades, no nothing. Just a simple watch, all right? <laughs> Jesus. All right. So what do you think? Let's say I have more ideas on it that, and again, we could keep it affordable, simple, and good. I want to visit Connecticut. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You better wait until after uh, we sort of hit the high, uh, which is at the end of May. Hi, Eddie. Okay. Now, I, what I'm really asking is that you see all of these startups and I, and you know, every time I see, oh, we're passionate about that, I want to strangle them because it's such a trite thing. Okay, so this has got to be marketed. Uh, and the it, it's going to have a lot of different things. Okay, it's, it's going to have a... Tim, you live in Greenwich? Oh, wow. Okay, there's some... <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, all right, uh, Eddie can come out and visit you in Greenwich, and I'll come down and join both of you, and we can go look at watches at, uh, what is it? I don't know where, I don't even know if anything's open anymore down there for watch stores. Okay, so let's just focus, okay? Let's see, now let's just, for a second, say, okay, you want a good quality watch. In fact, high quality. It's not going to be high horology because high horology is going to monkey around with, oh, we'll have engraving and we'll have this super finishing. The washers come with decent finishing, okay? We're going to have a an enamel um, dial on it with somebody suggested that uh, we get blued hands. And I like that. Uh, that just, that really adds something nice to it. And we can get blued. Uh, Breguet hands, not that difficult and not that expensive either. So, so here, here's what you have. You've got a Wooten Lannan and Caton case. You have a Vosseur movement. Uh, you have a an enamel um, dial, Breguet hands, 
and then a nice strap okay it could be a good leather strap uh would be something that we could find a really uh, uh a really good strap and there are a lot of them we, you can get uh there's one in um uh new york that'll make them any way you want them okay so that's where we are so far okay um okay so let's have some ideas um is this for the imaginary watch company we're making yes eddie uh you should take the washer apart and finish <laughs> ain't gonna happen geezer uh could you have a cushion style uh case Mm. Mm, a cushion style case we could i guess you know the thing is 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 that a cushion style i don't know because i i again i don't know if that would add expense what's the topic go stand in the corner adrian you're late again all right but your nose right against against <laughs> the corner we're talking about creating a watch company, Adrian. You were here this morning, I think. Okay, uh, Gator Grain Strap is good. Uh, just want a good quality movement that is accurate and reliable. Okay. You know, something else, too. Um, if people would prefer a Gator Strap, the the way for them to get a good greater Gator Strap is whatever country they're in, get the Gator Strap there and Put it on the watch that's i it, it's like uh the 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 with that for that dunhill i got a really good gator strap that happened to be on sale at um my sort of go-to let me see if i got it here yeah uh pan uh panatime the, these they have a real range of quality in their in their um in their straps and i would say it's sort of like starts at the mediumish low medium level and goes up to some some pretty good ones um so that's you know that's an option uh that every now and then you know they'll have a they'll have a watch band that they were unable to sell sell and they really dropped the price on it but I think on the other hand, if you have a good, I mean, there's if just a good leather strap looks good. Okay. All right. Uh, sapphire glass, of course. Yeah. Even the uh, sapphire glass is, um, sapphire glass is, is not expensive. Uh, it's man-made sapphire. Okay, never shop for them. Now, if okay, uh, aren't Gator straps illegal in California now? Yes, they are, Geezer. Yeah, they're illegal a lot of places now. Th that's why uh, that if we start with a leather strap with a quick release on it, what you can do is you can swap it out for whatever you want. Uh, what do you think of the brand name, Sanders and Jay? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, we already have the name. We, that was the one that they decided on. They wanted to call it Beret Watches. Um, and so, I, you know, if you put it into French, eh, it looks better. Now, what about the dial? What kind of fonts would you guys want? We could have uh, uh, the kind of fonts and the kind of numbers around. What would you like? I cannot put up with stamp gator leather strap. Okay, all right, Adrian. Um, Adrian. Okay, so what would be a good idea, Adrian? Now remember, we got the problem. We don't want to have to mess with sites. And so, uh, Adrian, what would you suggest? You have you have some good ideas. Buffalo ostrich lizard is okay. Good idea. Ostrich, ostrich is pretty interesting. Uh, it, ostrich is funny though. It can either look really cheesy, even the best ostrich, or it can look great. So it's 
okay uh we'll be i'm i'm not a watchmaker i will do distribution <laughs> mark j okay mark j you be the ceo uh now what the ceo's job does it's really simple you just come up with all the money <laughs> uh no it hey Stuart, how you doing uh no don't only don't only chapters not sure what that means uh Stuart. uh quarter arabic numerals quarter arabic numerals what are they tom thomas what are quarter arabic number numerals a metal bracelet um i don't no i mean mark listen listen mark listen carefully mark are you listening to me pick up ears we're trying to keep it at a at an affordable level all right and all you're doing is adding stuff to it don't do that pay attention now and how we're going to make it nice all right and inexpensive but with quality stuff all right you just come on now focus okay eddie uh three six nine twelve i like that california dial i also like that mark <laughs> yes okay tom uh three six nine and twelve all right you guys like that one all right no numerals only uh dial chapters okay um they're also Stuart. they're also called indexes but i know what you mean oh uh, those are the little um okay like i said this is what we've got now because this was a uh this was from uh an enamel uh for an enamel dial and you know i guess anything could be on here uh how many of you are are familiar with i'm paying attention my idea helps the buyer from ever needing to change their leather band yeah they add about a you know they, have you ever priced the difference uh, between a leather band and a metal band? What are they? And what's the typical charge? You're talking about adding another thousand to it. I don't know. Okay, where will the headquarters be? In cyberspace, Eddie. <laughs> Wherever you live, Eddie, that'll be it. We'll put them in Cambridge. Okay, $600. If we don't have to add that, let's not. Uh, again it's it's something that um it's an option that somebody can go ahead and and uh go out and buy a, a one for it i don't think i don't know how well they would go with uh, teardrop uh teardrop lugs either simple black calf leather a fancy arabic font would be good okay yeah the i yeah leather you know it it's the thing is is that so many watches we get uh, uh the high quality ones all have gator bands and but now that's beginning to change um what uh moser did was have kudu which is some african antelope or something like that i don't know i i'm not crazy about it to tell you the truth uh the watches are so good we might ever over uh overlook it no mark it's not going to be an option okay <laughs> not an option it's out <laughs> Okay, the ghost will be the logo. There you go. No room for negotiation on that. Hey, Maxplanation, California dial is cool. Yeah, let me see if this guy's going to do a California dial. How's that? that but see, I, we had talked about having it the opposite of this, uh, having like a cream dial and uh then um black uh uh index numbers okay yeah mark the, i i think yeah this is again we, we sort of to to have it worked out the goat needs to be the logo <laughs> no <laughs> not if you're going to call it montre's beret which was I don't know what happened to what happened to uh, Bruce. Bruce is, should be up and about. I hope Bruce is okay. Um, who will come up with a mock-up at the end? Uh, Eddie, since you volunteered for it, you do it. All right. Mark, uh, are, are you any good at art? 
Okay, Eddie, I've seen some of your stuff. We have a lot of artists, guys. You know, I keep getting them on our site. Stuart, a horrible uh, dial mixture of Roman and Arabic numerals. Okay. Um, all right. Well, listen, you guys, you know, I don't have to do this. Um, here, here's what you can do. Uh, do a dial idea. All right. And... Uh, with a, I, I, I do like this case though. I really like the case with the teardrop lugs, uh, mainly because it looks so much like uh, what uh, Kerry Wooten Lonnen has. Uh, Ophium used it, but then Ophium decided, Ophium did all kinds of other stuff. They had Giloche and so forth. I think that with a, an enamel dial, you up the quality of it, okay? Goat with a beret. <laughs> Uh, get the guy who did the Archie. Uh, yes, geezer. He he his he's really good. Yeah, that guy is good. Uh, MX Max Planation. I'm an artist too. Okay. Well, listen, you guys. Um, uh, yeah, that case shape. I think we're we're good on the case shape. Uh, and again, the center seconds isn't going to be any thicker than the small seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. Adrian, any other ideas? Adrian, I keep calling you Adrian. I don't know why. Junior, we need to come up with a final price. Okay. All right. So let's, I was trying to add it up. We'll, we'll say roughly um, the movement's a thousand. We'll say the case is 300, okay? So you've got uh, 1,300. We'll add another 200 for the enamel dial. It may not be that much. So we got uh, $1,500. Um, okay. So the hands are, we'll say they're five bucks for all three hands, something like that. Or we can maybe have the dial maker do it. Okay, so we're talking about, okay, the basic expense we'll say is 1700 okay, for everything. Yeah, Mark, I agree. That's that's how come, uh, I forgot who it was who mentioned that we needed a, a, a center second. A soft calf strap with quick release. That That's a good idea. I like that too. Um you know, maybe that we ought to have options of different colors, black, brown, something like that. How about for the uh, color of the dial? You guys who are artists, why don't you why don't you do some dials in some different colors, keeping in mind that the uh, dial is going to be um, enamel. Okay, add it all up, and you should get an MSRP of $30,000. I don't see 30,000 if we're, are you going to sell this or should, uh, I'm not going to sell it. We're just talking about it. You know, just trying to get an idea of what's out there. I don't, I, I don't know where you're coming at. Uh, boy, 30,000. Hi, hi, howdy. I, I was thinking like maybe, you know, three or 4,000. I, it doesn't leave anything for, um, let's see, marketing markup, 8K, profit, 9K, booze budget, 12K. Uh, NS something, everything there, I think you're going a little light on the booze budget, though. That thing may be pumped up. All right, are you going to sell this uh, to a viewer? <laughs> We're not going to sell it. We just talking about it you know if we if we created it uh, i mean and i don't know i not to make a lot of money because i think a lot of people who try to make a lot of money um go broke pretty quick because there are a lot of companies out there and they see these you know 20 30 40 thousand dollar watches and they figure well i can do that and they come up with something that doesn't quite make it and so they they it doesn't work too well for them. i was thinking of something a lot less than that um, you know, if, if maybe, uh, 
2x, something like that. So you get a, if you're talking about 1700s, uh, we're talking about a, what, $3,400 watch, all right? And you double you double your, your money just on that, 76 Bitcoins, okay. Cream or white dial, yeah, we had agreed on that. What is the case size? Good question. Now, the case size, we, were, we talked about 39 millimeters. Uh, that, we, we, somewhere between 38 and 40, and so someone came up with 39, okay. Uh, yeah, John, you're right. Um, but the, the thing of it is, is that other there's some other people who may be doing it successfully, I think. You know, if you had bought a watch from F.P. Jorn back in 1999, uh, you could get some really good deals on it. But ever since then, that's impossible. And you could have all the uh, the chronomet blues you want from whenever those things started, but not anymore. Do a batch of people here and in HHL. I don't know. I, you know, I, it just, it just was an idea. This is, this is something, um, that we talked about. And as a hypothetical, not as something that, uh, I'm going to run out and do, <laughs> We should trade the watches for toilet paper rolls. Okay, all right. Um, junior, 39 is acceptable. Okay, you prefer 38. Okay, so we're arguing between 38 and 40, so 39, we'll stick with that. Mark, I've got more startup watch ads on my uh, Facebook page you can shake a stick at. Yeah, you do. Uh, but I'll tell you, how many of those have really good movements in them. This is this is this is the thing that if they they tend of all of the things they tend to go cheap on, it's always the movement. Uh, now, of course, if they make their own movement, that's something else. Uh, let's see, um, diamond shaped crown for the watch. Well, I was thinking an onion uh, shape there. You're not going to cut yourself on that. Hey, David, um, why not make it much more uh, disruptive? Magnetic hands that levitate on superconductor dials. See, now this poor poor old Mark got in trouble for saying weird stuff. <laughs> this is something that is affordable, okay? All right. Um <laughs> I suggest buckle over deployant class. It's deployant um, if it keeps the cost down. Yeah, you know, the, the whole thing on the strap, uh, Adrian, people can get whatever strap they want later on. Um, this one has, they have a, <laughs> I always say uh, Android buckle, but they're not Android. It's an anatone or something like that. Onion shaped, yeah, I, I like those too. Um, do you know Kent Rollins? No, I do not. Um, can we stamp dial with Tiffany and Company? You may do that if you want. It will come with a little stamp that you can change it on. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Okay, Mark. So your job from now on is to <laughs> watch. <laughs> Truth fears. Oh, okay. Gold is for girls. Truth fears. That's not true. Gold is for me. Um, ship it with no strap. I don't think people would like that, Eddie. I, I some strap, you know, and then we can put uh Montre's beret right here too. Or you know, we can change the name. Hi, howdy. Uh, anodized. I don't think that is <laughs> what's Android. It's uh, how do you, uh, it's it's me because I can never remember the name of what they call the buckle, you know what I call a regular buckle, but there's a name for it. Uh, so I don't know. I have to keep for what it is. Uh, yeah, keeping it simple. Uh, hi, Orange Chan. You know the thing is though is that you know if something like this came on the market, listen, this sort of what you would hear is what you'd hear, Vosseur movement, 
Vooten Lannan and Kalen case, enamel dial, um, quick release leather strap. Okay, thirty seven hundred dollars. How does that sound? Let's sort of put everything together. Does that sound like something worth having or not? A tang buckle, yeah. Tom, a uh, tang is one of them. You're right. That's there's another one that starts with an A, and I can't think of what it is. But you're right. Uh, pin buckle is another one, Mark. <laughs> there's still another one. And it starts with an A, and I can't remember what it is. It's better if I just remember tang or pin or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> I just call it a regular buckle, and um. I, you know, the truth is, though, I really do like uh, deployant um, bands uh, and for buckles and stuff. For this reason, every time you open up your regular buckle, your tang buckle, you, you sort of goose it a little and it doesn't hang in there as well. A is for annoying. <laughs> you don't know it either, Eddie. Okay, uh, let's see uh, how quick we can end up. I think we need Tom Masso uh, add the smoke the spokesman. You know, uh, Tim Masso, I don't listen to Tim Masso because his stuff, listening to him, I want to buy everything he describes. <laughs> so I, I better not listen to Tim. Uh, yeah, he would be a great spokesman, Mark. <laughs> Love the PP deployments. Yeah, I like him too. That's it. Uh, or Dylan, uh, David, thank you. Um, the French is Ardillon, and David, forgive me for mispronouncing it. All right, yes, that's that's what it's called. An Ardillon, it, it, if you look at you know, there's a lot of, of uh, watches. If you go to their website and you look at the descriptions, uh, you'll see that term used for regular buckles. Okay, manual wind. Oh, Adrian, I agree with that, but Vosher doesn't have any manual wind yet. I wish they did. Android sounds better. I agree, BS. <laughs> it's easier for me to remember Ardeon, though. If, it, if Ardeon is pronounced correctly, I bet it sounds really cool. Wanted to say deployment class, but uh, worried uh, may uh, send me into the corner. <laughs> No, you know, here's the thing about a deployment cast. I agree, and some of them, but they, they can really jack up the price of a watch. So the other thing is, is that a lot of people don't like them for some reason. But here's the point, okay? With straps, we don't have to worry about them. We can have a simple strap with a tang buckle made out of real good soft calf leather and and a quick release on it and you know if you want to go get another one go get one you know people act like well it's got to have the logo on it <laughs> we'll send them to 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 goat <laughs> strap factory or something is there also a papillon buckle there yes i think there is geezer and and i've heard of that it's uh uh, this may actually be a papillon buckle. Uh, it's it's, but it's a type of deployant, uh, I think. And I, in fact, yeah, I've heard that term used. I think it refers to. Let's see if I put this right. Nah. Okay. See those two little things right there that stick out. This is my favorite kind because you just squeeze it right here and it comes right open really good. Uh, th those are great ones. But, you know, you can you can get these, you can get the straps in a deployant buckle anywhere you want to, okay? A butterfly clasp. Yeah, that's it. And they're also called papillon. So it's, you know, a trigger release. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, not AC3. Nope. Um, yeah, Papillon class. That Papillon class sounds so cool. I don't know why. Maybe, you know, I always associate Papillon with that film Papillon about Devil's Island. All right, the problem with the deployant class is that it is a, it, if it's a bad deployant, it gets loose and it's uncomfortable. Okay, 
Uh, the good ones are comfortable and work great, but they are more expensive. Yeah, um, that may be true too. That's, we're going to go with the nice leather class with a tang buckle, okay? And the quick release, um, they're going to be quick releases. You know, if it's, if it's a quick release strap, it, it sort of encourages people. Uh, Steve McQueen had a Papillon buckle. There you go. That was it, Mark. It was Steve McQueen, I guess, who was in it. Okay. Any loom? No. Um, I don't think so, uh, Crappy. Uh, loom is a big thing. I know a lot of people really like loom. Um, you're going to have Breguet hands. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, 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 I wouldn't put in loom, but what do I know? If, you, if, if it's, I don't know. I just don't know about loom. I don't like it. Shut up and take my money. <laughs> that, would be, that would be making money. I, it, it, it's, it reminds you of that old joke. If you want to make a little money uh, in the watch business, start with a lot of money. Okay. All right. No loom. All right. We'll, we'll skip the loom for now. Uh, maybe they have a DIY loom kit and somebody can go there with a little paintbrush and paint their own loom on. Okay. Uh, like on dress watches, not required. Okay. All right. Brigade hands are good. Forget the loom. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, no loom. Okay. Just, st st I'll tell you what. <laughs> we had to include a loom kit. Uh, loom adds to the price. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it can. I don't know where it would add to the looks of it. But if somebody wants loom, they can go down to Loom R Us, get their hands loomed up, and go home with a smile on their face. <laughs> hey, Mezine44, not necessarily. Uh, it will patina nicely. Uh, radium loom. There you go. That'll, <laughs> that'll that'll get rid of the loom fans. No phosphorus. All right. Uh, salmon dial. Ooh boy, salmon dial. Those are those are very cool. You know, you could take a look at the uh, the colors that Gronfeld uses. Loom um, salmon and a certain color blue and a certain color green. I like a lot of those different colors. Uh, maybe what we ought to do is that um, I'm going to be meeting with the um, the dial maker, the guy who makes the uh, enamel dials. Maybe I'd ask him about that. You know, I have so many in a certain color. The problem with that, let's say we pick it wrong. And, and again, I'm talking about someone who's going to start a real watch company. If you have something like cream, it's a fairly neutral color. It'll go with anything, and um, you don't have to worry about it. This is sort of a uh, – it's hard to see. That's sort of a cream. It looks more cream here than it does there. There it looks white, um, but sort of a light cream, okay, at another session all at, all at night. Oh, is it time to go? Oh, my goodness. We've really gone on a long time. We started at four. Hey, Rodrigo. Okay. Uh, you reach your phone and tell uh, the time at night. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. All right, guys. Listen, we, we, we're almost over half an hour, so I'm going to have to run. Um, but we, we, can, uh, we can carry this on later. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, do you want to talk about uh, this some more tomorrow? And what I'll do is that I'll get uh, see if I can get some more information about what the uh, dials would cost and what some of these other things would cost. Uh, maybe <laughs> what this is hypothetical. We'd have to, you know, if we got all of those things, we'd have to put them together. Uh, and what we do is we'd have Eddie put them all together because he's pretty good at, at the other part of it. Uh, <laughs> why are we late? <laughs> I don't know. Don't run, walk slowly. Okay. All right. Well, listen, there you are. This was Bruce finally shows up. Bruce, 
tell them what the name of the watch company is. And this is what it looks like. We we put it in French. I think that's it. Yeah. All right. That was the name that Bruce insisted on. <laughs> so Bruce, and then you come late, and I took all the flack for it. They were going to name it after the goats. <laughs> all right, guys. You take care. Uh, hasta mañana. <laughs>